Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here. Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And this is going to be part two of Attributes of Satan. You know, it's uh, a lot of this material I've covered in different uh, videos. But this is going to be from a, I guess, a different angle, so to speak. So, yes, this is a new series, and I'm going somewhere with this, and uh, I can't even tell you how many videos I've had uh, deleted from this platform, but uh, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out with a bang. That's why I keep telling everybody, get my work. Send me an SD card or a USB drive. Uh, if you're overseas, please outside of the u.s send me an sd card and uh buy at least the version two point i mean i'm sorry three three point oh three point one um somebody sent me a 2.0 version it took like 12 hours to download all my stuff onto that thing you know uh, i i just take it and plug it in and then go to sleep you know, and then wake up six, seven, eight hours later and hopefully it's done, you know, but or close to it. But uh, yeah, at least a version three, 3.1, I could be done in an hour. So makes a difference because I don't know how much longer I'll be on YouTube. Really don't. And this is going somewhere. So... So this is part two of Attributes of Satan. And uh, some of this information is on uh, God made a bet with, or Satan made a bet with God, or something along that lines. You know, uh, they've deleted so many of my videos, I can't even keep track of them all. They don't even tell me. Sometimes I go to, somebody asks me a question, I'm like, oh yeah, I did a video on that. I look up the, try to look up the video. It's not on YouTube. It's not on there. But I go to my uh, audio files and I find it. So I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, sometimes they tell me they've deleted things, but sometimes they don't. So we're going to look at the power of Satan. And um, so let's go. Book of Job, chapter 1. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Eschewed means hated. So he was perfect as far as his relationship, and up, perfect and upright with his relationship with God, feared God, and hated evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen. Now people think about it, 500 yoke of oxen. That's at least a pair of oxen pulling a plow. Why would you need 500 yoke of oxen. I mean, that is a lot of territory to cover. If you figure one yoke of oxen can plow, let's say, one acre a day, 500 of them, that's, man, this is, uh, that he's got a huge growing operation going on. Think about it. And 500 she-asses in a very great household. Why a great household? Well, he's got servants. Because Job and his 10 kids are not feeding 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500, uh, 500 yokes of oxen, and 500 she-asses. Now, he's got servants. This guy's got a large group of servants. So, just like Abraham had a group of ser servants, so... 
verse 3, so that this man was the greatest of all the men in the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, everyone his day. Some say this is the bir their birthdays. And sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Drink what? Yeah, you you get the idea. When somebody says, oh, I'm going to go out the, uh, tonight and go drinking, they're not talking about getting a glass of water, right? Yeah. And it was so when the days of their feasting was gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. And I've mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again. Uh, some antichrists will claim, oh, well, Job was only concerned about his sons. He didn't care about his daughters. His daughters aren't even mentioned here. He didn't do burnt offerings for his daughters because he didn't care about them. Well, perhaps his daughters were more, well, how would you say, cared, cared for the Lord more than his sons did. Perhaps his daughters were more righteous than his sons. That's, that's what I would guess. So, all right, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Now, if you don't know who the sons of God are, May I suggest we take a look at Job chapter 38. Now remember something. In Genesis, which I covered in part one, the order of events was God created the heavens and the earth. And then God formed Adam from the dust of the earth. So the earth had to have existed prior to Adam. So let's take a look at this. Um, Job is questioning or asking God uh, why this crazy stuff that we're getting ready to read in Job 1 happened to him. And, But that's not the point of this uh, study. The point of this study where I'm going with this right now is who are the sons of God? And Genesis 6 is tied into this because in the days of Noah and the flood, the sons of God went unto, unto the daughters of men and there were giants born to them. And then God got so disgusted with the world that he flooded and drowned Everybody except for Noah and his sons, or uh, his family. So, and if you want to believe in a local flood, that's fine, you know. But if, if Noah was living in a valley, and God says, oh, I'm going to flood this place and get rid of all these giants, why didn't he tell jo uh, Noah to just move, you know? But the uh, Genesis 6 says that the, uh, the waters covered the, the, the mountains. So I don't know how the flood could have been local. I just, I don't get it. And besides, uh, take a, if, I don't know how many of you have ever been to the Grand Canyon. But if you ask me, that looks like a lot of water pushing through very fast. So... You know, there's evidence of a flood all over the earth. So, Job 38, verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? You know, you're, you're, Job, you're speaking in the dark. 
and you don't know what you're talking about, knowledge. Verse 3, Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to give me an answer. Verse 4, Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Okay, when I created the heaven and the earth, where were you, Job? And the answer is, uh, Lord, I wasn't even born yet. Good answer, Job. Okay. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched a line upon it? And I've mentioned before that these are construction terms. You know, measures, stretching a line. You know, people uh, will stretch a line so that when they lay the stones or bricks for a wall, they follow the line. They take a piece of string and they tie it tight and stretch it. And then they follow the line. And that's how you know you got a straight line and a straight wall. Verse 6. Whereupon are there foundations thereof fastened? Uh, the foundation, uh, you know, where's the foundations of the earth? What are they fastened to? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now we're talking about the creation of the earth here. And the sons of God shouted for joy. So these sons of God are shouting for joy at the foundation or the creation of the earth. Adam didn't come until six days later. These have to be angels. They have to be. There's no other way around it. Unless, of course, you, well, let's go to Genesis chapter 6, and we'll read this. And um, we'll take a look. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. All right? And I'm not quoting the book of Enoch. People will say, ah, you're getting your doctrine from Enoch. Do I quote Enoch? Now, somebody, I did a video on Enoch, but that was because somebody wanted me to do a commentary on it. But I don't quote from Enoch. I don't get my doctrines from Enoch. I get my Bible's doctrines from the King James Bible and the Geneva and sometimes the Webster's. So I'm not King James only, like they love to say. Of course, they would rather you use... Uh, Vatican-inspired Bibles, you know, the Pope that burned people, uh, well, the Pope didn't do it, but his his bishops did, burn people at the stake for daring to have a Bible. I mean, that's what the English Reformation was all about. We want to have a Bible, and the Pope doesn't want us to have it. So, Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Now, here it is, it's talking about men, humans, you know, Adamites. Men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God, now wait a minute, if these sons of God are, are human, well, mankind, why in verse 1 are they talking about men, daughters, and then sons of God? Why use a different term, men versus sons of God? Why use two different terms? I see no purpose for it. Verse 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took, a, took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Now, prior to this, people were living 800, 900 years. 
And God said, no, I'm going to make, I'm going to put a expiration date on here. I guess you could say 120 years. Now remember, these men are having daughters and then the sons of God are marrying these females. Verse 4 tells you what is the end result of this union. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. So there were giants in the days of Noah and after the flood, there were giants also after that. I mean, after all, what was Goliath? What were the Philistines? They were giants. There's been giant skeletons found all over the world. The Smithsonian used to have numbers of them, but they got rid of them. My dad, a World War II combat veteran, told me there used to be a giant skeleton in the um, Museum of, I, I don't remember if it's science or natural history or what, but the museum in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, so there was a giant skeleton. He saw it there as a kid. Well, it's not there anymore. They've gotten rid of them. Now they'll tell you, oh, those are fake. But dinosaur bones are real, they'll tell you. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, giants. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. What was Thor? Thor was a, had a human mother and a god for a father. What was Hercules? Same thing. Human mother. I think, uh, was it Zeus? His father? I don't know. You know. But the um, Greeks and Romans and the Norse, N-O-R-S-E, Norse, you know, the where the Vikings came from, they all have these kind of um, legends. Japan has the same type of legends. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. But most so-called pastors, if you want to call them that, I call them wolves in sheep's clothing, but they want you to believe that... Um, Righteous men married unrighteous women. And then they had giants for children. So do believing men marry unbelieving women who, and then they have giants for children? Does that make any sense? And how come all the men are good and all the women are bad? Huh? Does that make any sense? Not to me. But this is what the modern so-called church world teaches and believes. But when you look at the sons of God of Job 38, they existed at the foundation of the earth, but Adam didn't exist until six days afterwards. So how can they be men? They can't. Oh, they were shouting without a body, I've heard some say. All right, smart guy. Show me in the Bible where the what day or time the angels were created. Can you show me? See, the Bible isn't about the book. Uh, it's not the book of Adams. Or, uh, I'm sorry. Angels. The Bible is not the book of angels. Satan is mentioned. Gabriel's mentioned. Michael's angel, uh, an angel that's mentioned. The Bible is the book of Adam and his children. And Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel. This is their book. The Adam, it is the book of the Adamites. So, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. You see, the fallen angels that we covered in part one 
wanted to pollute the bloodline of Adam kind, wanted to destroy it. These giants were not of God's planting. Sure, God created Adam, God created the angels, but they were never to mix and intermarry. Do you see where I'm going with this? Hmm. Verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he'd made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. The Lord repents sometimes, okay? But the Lord is holy and righteous and just. The Lord does not repent of evil. Us, on the other hand, when we are told to repent, we are told to repent of our wickedness. There is a difference. And people will try to confuse the issue, tell them to go to hell, because they probably will. Anybody think God repents of evil is of the devil. And the Lord said, I will destroy man. Now that word man is the same word as Adam. And in case you don't know it, Adam is a racial description. Yeah. Uh, it actually means to be ready to show blood in the face. It's the same race of people that built churches all over their countries, in the United States, in Europe, in the UK. Yeah. Think about it. Are there Christian churches in, built by the Japanese? How about the Chinese? How about the Mongolians? How about the Africans? I don't think so. No, it's, you know, uh, 100, 150, 200 years ago, when you said you were a Christian, it was gone without saying that, well, you're white. That's it. I mean, you know. And it repented the Lord that he'd made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. Oh, let's take a look at something real quick. All right, let's take a look at something. Song of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 10. Now, this is talking about a bride and her husband. Or a husband and his bride. I think it's the... I think it's a... I, I don't want to read the whole chapter. All right, so... A lover and their spouse. Okay? My beloved is white. W-H-I-T-E. And ruddy. Ruddy means reddish. Uh, women used to take rouge, a reddish thing, and put it on their cheeks. Um, at least when I was a kid, they did. Not so much anymore. My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. Let's go to Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 7. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. White like milk, white like snow, huh? They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Uh, if you don't know what a ruby is, it's a semi-precious stone, and its color is red. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14 and 15, we read John giving a description of Jesus. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Not, not, oh, his hair, his hair, it was woolly, woolly. His hair was like woolly. 
No, it says his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Don't eat the yellow snow, they say, right? No, snow is white. His head and his hairs were white like wool, white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. I used to think he had red eyes like an albino. I don't think that anymore. Any of you ever seen a gas stove? What color is the flame? Blue? Yeah, it can be. Verse 15. And his feet like undefined brass, as if burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Somebody did a video on brass being burned in a furnace. It was white hot with a brownish, red, well, kind of a reddish golden brownish tint. I thought, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I know. Those of you that have been listening to me for years, this is, this is not new info, but it's a good review. And not only that, um, I'm going somewhere with this. But I want to lay the foundation. You know me. I, I love to lay the foundation, and then I build the house. At least, I try. And I try to build the foundation on the rock, which is Jesus Christ, who created everything. All right, so, let's go back to Job. Or, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And we're not just talking about men here. We're talking about, you know, women were taken from men. So when he says man, he's talking about the women too. And it repented the Lord that he'd made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. God was sorry he had had this mess, right? Now remember something. The fallen angels, I did this in verse uh, part one, the fallen angels, a third of the angels followed Satan and they were cast out to the earth when they tried to kill God and failed. And, you know, why doesn't God just destroy them right out of hand? Well, we're going to get to that when we go back to Job 1. Satan serves a purpose in God's plan. In a nutshell, if God's going to give you the gift of eternal life, he's going to make you prove to yourself that you're going to be faithful to the end. Think about it. You know? I mean, what a gift. Eternal life in a, in a, in a kingdom, living in a mansion, in a city with streets of gold with people that don't steal or lie or kill i mean, think about it eternal life i mean what a gift i'm not worthy of that no way never was never will be So God says, I'm going to destroy, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. Now, the earth was, uh, if it was a, a, a local flood, how come the birds of the air, the fowls of the air are going to be destroyed? Why don't they just land on another mountain until the waters subside? Huh? Huh? No, there's going to be water for 40 days and 40 nights. The birds are going to be flying. They're going to get tired. They're going to get to the point where they can't fly anymore. They're going to land on the water and they're going to drown because they're, the water covered the mountains. But, you know, I don't consider that a doctrine to disfellowship people over. You want to believe in a, a local flood, that's fine, you know, but that's up to you. Verse 8, but Noah found grace, G-R-A-C-E, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. 
You know, people will say, oh, the Old Testament was nothing but laws and judgment and punishment and, he, you know, God being mad at everybody and killing people. But yet here in Genesis, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now here in verse 9, here's a very interesting thing. These are the generations of Noah. Generations. You ever heard of a generator? It creates electricity or produces. But if you look at the first four letters of generations, as in offspring or children, these are the generations of Noah. What are the first four letters? G-E-N-E. -E. Gene, as in genetics. Yeah, think about that. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. His bloodline, his seed line. Think about that. You know, people read this and they just gloss over it. And they, they miss the point. This is why, this is why God destroyed the earth at this time. Noah was a just man and perfect in his genes, I mean generations. And Noah walked with God. There's not many people that can, the Bible says that they walked with God. Noah was one. Enoch was another. Uh, maybe Abraham too, I'm not sure. Boy, can you imagine walking next to your best friend? Wow. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And just remember, ham's not kosher. That's a joke, people. Listen to this. The earth also was corrupt, corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Now, if you listen to legends, the giants were killing and eating people. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh, for all flesh, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. All flesh corrupted his way upon the earth. Why? Because the fallen angels were polluting the bloodline of mankind. Hmm. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Think about it. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Through who? The giants. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There's a reason why God is in the days of Israel going into the land of the Canaan, said to go kill the Canaanites. Kill them all. He didn't say go in there and go in there and tell them about the love of Jesus. Tell them I love them and I want them to be saved. No, he said go in and kill them all. Why? They were polluted bloodline. Their genetics was corrupted. They were fallen angel human hybrids. But what did, they, what, did, what, did, what did Israel do? They looked at the Canaanite women who were probably very beautiful. They lusted after them and they married them. And probably the women with their men too. But that's a whole other subject in and of itself. I gotta make a several hours Bible study out of just that. God said, don't marry them. This is why you need to read the entire Bible from cover to cover. Uh, Abraham told his servant to find a wife for his son Isaac. And he said, don't take of the daughters of Canaan. Don't do it. 
And then Isaac did the same thing for Jacob. Esau married two Hittite women. We're, we're Canaanites, one of the tri Canaanite tribes. God said he hated Esau. What, Chaplain Bob? That's a lie. God loves everybody. Your wolves and sheep's clothing pastors will tell you. This is why the, Paul told Timothy to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And dispensational Baptist theology is not rightly dividing the way of truth. Because what they'll do is they'll you show them a plain Bible verse that any junior high school kid could read and, and understand. And they'll say, oh, that's a different dispensation. Uh, then they explain it away. It's because they're devils and they work for Satan. I used to think pastors were mis, mistaught. I don't believe that anymore. I think they work for the devil. I really do. There might be a few, and I don't make those decisions, you know, who gets in and who doesn't, but, you know, that's my opinion. I gave up trying to have fellowship with these churches decades ago. I gave up. You know, I'm uh, almost 70 years old, and I've been a believer for all my life. I came to the Lord in late, late December of 1989. So I've, uh, I'd like to think I've learned a couple of things. The Lord gave me some really uh, lessons that I was less than enthusiastic about, I could tell you. But uh, yeah. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Now remember, all doesn't always mean all. Okay, I did a Bible study on that. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But then in the book of Hebrews, it says Christ was without sin. All right, so all does not always mean all. Christ was not a sinner. If he was, you don't have a Savior, and neither do I. Okay? Verse 13, Genesis 6. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh, well, not Noah and his family, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Uh, it's curtain time, people. The show's getting ready to end. All right, well, you know, and then Noah is told by the Lord to build an ark. And, um, well, the rest is history. Of course, uh, people tell you, oh, that's not true. But, uh, oh, that's a children's fairy tale. Well, one day they're going to get to meet the one that flooded the earth. Yeah. All right, so... Let's go back to Job, chapter 1. Job chapter 6, verse, uh, Job chapter 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Sons of God, angels are there, they present themselves before the Lord, and Satan's also among them. Now, some people will tell you, oh, well, this is in heaven. I don't think so. I think they were kicked out of heaven. I think the Lord is on the earth. But, you know, the Bible's not clear on it. Uh, but in part one of this study, Attributes of Satan, uh, they were kicked out of, you know, they, Satan and his angels were kicked out of heaven. So this is why I think they're on the earth. All right, so, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? 
Hey, Satan, where are you coming from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, uh, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. You know, I'm hanging out, walking here and there, you know, hanging out, going around. Verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Does God fear you for nothing? Verse 10. Hast thou not made an hedge about him? Now remember, a hedge is like a fence. You know, fences keep out um, unwanted neighbors and animals. And I did a Bible study on the hedge. Uh, the hedge is mentioned a lot in the Bible. Doth, God, doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made an hedge about him? and about his house, and about, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Oh yeah, God, you think just because you've given him everything in this world and life that he wants, that he actually loves you? Ha! Huh. You, uh, you, you, uh, you, uh, let me take everything away from him. And we'll see what happens. He's going to curse you to your face, God. And God said to Satan, Oh, you're making a bet with me about Job, huh? You're on. Well, that's, that's the Bob translation. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So Satan is allowed to do whatever he wants to Job, but he can't kill Job. He's, he's not allowed to kill Job. Everything else is fair game. Verse 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their elders' brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Who are the Sabaeans? I believe the correct, uh, 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 the, the proper explanation of the Sabaeans were modern day Arabs. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So they killed these servants who, who were plowing with the oxen and the asses. And they killed them with the sword. And only he was escaped. 16. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Now, uh, without making this a 10 hour study, Elijah in the book of Kings, when he was confronting Ahab and his his evil servants, the, his army, an army of, I think, 200, was going to capture Elijah, the prophet. I did a hour and 40 minute video on this. They came to capture Elijah and he called upon the Lord and brought fire down from the sky and burned him up. 
How's that for a flamethrower? And yet, in the book of Revelation, I think it's Revelation. Revelation or Thessalonians, maybe both. The false prophet that serves the beast, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be able to mimic the same type of miracle. Bring fire down from the sky. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Oh, yeah. Revelation 13, um, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So he's pretending to be the Lamb of God, but he's really the dragon, the devil. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Verse 13, here we go. And he doeth great wonders, miracles. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven, fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And this is where we get 666. Okay, uh, so he is going, he's going to be able to do miracles, bring fire down from the sky to devour, destroy, burn up anybody that opposes the beast, the devil's servant. Okay, and people are going to look at this thinking, this is God Almighty come to earth. And, you know, so-called Christians or churchgoers that don't know their Bible will likely be deceived. I mean, really. Um, you know, when you get the, the 700 Club and the TBN crowd, uh, and their wolves in sheep's clothing start telling people that even Christ has come, and they get a uh, rabbi to, you know, back them up, Whew, boy. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power. And he had power. This is not God. This is the devil's people. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. That's going to be us, people. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six six six. Number of a man. This is why I believe man was created on the sixth day. The number of a man, six. And then on the seventh day, the Lord rested. That's why I mentioned it in part one. All right, let's go back to Job chapter one. Verse 16. And while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven. Satan has power to bring fire down from heaven. And this servant thought it was fire of God. Well, God of this world, maybe, but yeah. The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Wow. Wow. So the Sabaeans were under the leadership of the devil. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans have made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. 
Who are the Chaldeans? Well, if you read in the book of Daniel, you will know that the Chaldeans and the Babylonians were, well, they were related. And uh, they conquered Jerusalem in the days of Daniel. They conquered them and took them into captivity. That's what the entire book of Daniel is all about. Yeah. And while he was yet speaking, there came another, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, 19, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, tornado. And there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead. I wonder if the daughters uh, escaped alive. I don't know. And I only am al escaped alone to tell thee. So here it is. God, uh, God allowed Satan to have power to test and try Job. He sent the Sabaeans, fire from heaven, and a whirlwind. Well, a great wind. I I'm guessing a whirlwind. Like a tornado. So, Satan had power over people. Remember something, people. Anybody that's not of the covenant of God, that's not saved, not indwelt in the Holy Spirit, they could be possessed of a devil or a demon spirit, whatever you want to call it. Anybody. Think about it. I think these... Uh, Serial killers, I think they're all possessed of devils, but what do I know? So, fire from the sky, Satan had the power to do. Satan had the power of a wind, maybe a whirlwind, maybe a tornado. That's some, those are attributes of Satan. He has power to do this to a point that God allows. Verse 20, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not nor charged foolishly. You know, it's funny is when you continue reading, um, well, let's, let's read, continue reading Job chapter 2. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest, whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy flesh. Oh yeah, God, you think you know Job? You let me uh, touch his bones and his flesh, and he's going to curse you, God. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Woo. You can't kill him, Satan, but you, anything else you can do. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. This means from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head. I don't know if any of you had boils, but they are extremely painful. And he's got boils all over his body. 
and he took him a pot shard to scrape himself with all. So in other words, he took a piece of pottery, maybe a rounded piece, I don't know, and he's scraping himself. Uh, he is scratching himself. He's itching. And he sat down among the ashes. Uh, people, when you want to really humble yourself before the Lord, shave your head, wear sackcloth, and sit in ashes. Yeah. Verse 9, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. You notice Satan killed Job's sons, but he didn't kill his wife. Why? Because sounds like his wife works for the devil, doesn't it? Hey, Job, husband, why don't you curse God and die? Wow. How would you like to have a wife like that? But he, Job, said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Shall we receive not evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. So now you see Satan has power, but only as far as God allows. Satan is on a leash, so to speak. So, um, you know, people, when the Antichrist build a temple for their Lord, their Messiah, their Christ, well, their Messiah, the false prophet is going to be able to do a lot of these same type of miracles. I'm reasonably sure. At least fire from the sky. Can you imagine sending an army against the beast? And the false prophet stands in front, raises up his hands and brings fire down from the sky and burns up all the tanks and helicopters and airplanes, jets, whatever. Who's going to stand against the beast? No one. In Revelation 13 and verse 4, we read, And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And the answer is, Jesus, who is Christ, Lord of lords and King of kings. But not any man on this earth. And maybe Michael, the archangel. You know, but, um, yeah. So, I hope you uh, learned something. Yeah, I know, I'm starting to cover the same material I've covered in previous studies, but they, these are new studies. And I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere with this. I've done this in bits and pieces. And those of you that pay attention might make the connections but I'm going to if I'm going to get banned from socialist media I'm going to go out with a bang and uh, yeah all blessings praise glory and honor in Jesus precious name amen this is Chaplain Bob Walker Light of the World Ministries signing off and uh, if you want my Bible studies on thumb drive or US, USB, uh, US SD card drive, let me know. Send me an email, palmbeachweddings at gmail.com or bobwalkerkjv at hotmail.com or chaplainbob at protonmail.com. You know, because... When they delete my YouTube channel, uh, if they do, uh, they'll probably get rid of my email account too. So uh, that'll be a sad day. It really is. So, And remember, I am on, um, I am on Gab. Useless as that is. I'm also on Rumble. 
I'm also on Odyssey, and I'm also on BitChute. So keep that in mind. Praise Jesus. Amen. Part three coming up.